When people look for evidence of Israel's time in the desert, they often want archaeological remains. But such a request is unlikely to be fulfilled. Richard Elliott Friedman notes that skeptics assert we've combed the Sinai and not found any evidence. That assertion is just not true. There have not been any major excavations in the Sinai. Additionally, even if Sinai was excavated, it is unlikely we would find anything at all. Baruch Halpern notes that land armies did traverse that terrain without leaving detected archaeological traces. BC Sparks says semi-nomadic people and continual caravan crossings do not leave special, identifiable ruts in the hard gravel or the soft sand. One rut looks like another. Nor do they usually leave inscriptions with labels identifying the travelers or the herders and the dates of their migration. Ernst Knopf quibs that pottery does not give passport information and almost never is it possible to identify the nationality of a cooking pot. The archaeological invisibility of tent-dwelling nomads as well as transient caravans and migrants in the lower classes in sedentary populations make it difficult though not impossible to find some scattered traces. Over time, weathering would have destroyed a lot of the data that would have been left behind. In the region of southern Canaan, Erez ben Yosef worked on an archaeological site that displayed remains of tent dwellers, but also reports the lion's share of such remains was entirely washed away by massive floods. And thus, even if such surveys were more comprehensive, they would still provide only fragmentary information. BC Sparks also employed a mathematical comparison to help explain the odds of finding remains of the Israelites in the desert. He notes census data indicates the population of the Bedouin tribes of the Sinai Peninsula is roughly 40,000 and has been static in terms of growth for centuries. Yet we lack the overwhelming amount of the burials of hundreds of thousands to millions of Bedouins in some 100 to 200 generations since the Bronze Age. If the Exodus was actually comprised of 2 million people who remained in the region for only about 40 years, it would be the equivalent of finding evidence of 20,000 nomads over the course of 4,000 years. Sparks notes that the remains for millions who lived in the Sinai over the past 4,000 years is missing. Yet we do not think they did not exist just because the remains have not been found. Likewise, given that the Exodus population was most likely far less than 2 million, and they were only there for 40 years, it is incredibly unlikely we would even find evidence of Israel's wandering period. However, that alone doesn't mean there is no evidence to help support the historicity of the wandering time. The Hebrews left behind an account of their time in the desert, which can be examined and scrutinized. The Hebrews, and the mixed multitude that went with them, had spent generations in Egypt, if the account is based on an historical event, the people would have acted and thought in terms of the late 2nd millennium BCE culture and Egyptian customs and rituals from the same time. But when we dive into the Pentateuch, we find evidence of several internal clues that fit with an Egyptian culture from an earlier time period that later forgers would have had a hard time concocting. 